Good evening, everybody, and welcome right here to the gathering place in Simi Valley. Beautiful, beautiful today. We thank God for the wonderful weather and the thank you for all the rain that He's given us here in Southern California these last couple of years, and I know there's more coming. <clears throat> and that's the blessing of the Lord. He's blessing us with water so we don't have to pay for all these water bills to water our yards and everything else. And so they can't say you got a drought. Anyways, I would like to just remind everybody that next week, next Thursday, uh, Dr. Barry Linhart is going to be here. He's going to be speaking here, and uh, he will be here for the prayer uh, beforehand as well. And also on Friday morning, he will be here Friday morning to play. Uh, last uh, time that he was here, we just sang in worship, uh, really for a couple of hours. It was wonderful in the, in the Holy Spirit and tongues. <clears throat> and um, also he's going to be here Saturday the 9th, so three days, Thursday night, Friday morning, and of course Saturday morning. So um, don't forget to do that. Barry, I think he is one of the best revelators in the body of Christ right now. And um, you know, I listen to different people. Unfortunately, right now, a lot of people are... Um, the only people they're putting out there are the, the prophets, and some of them who are actual prophets, and some who are just guessing. But they're putting people out there because people are, they want to know what the future is. But, and that's good, but you won't grow only knowing what the future is. You have to grow knowing who you are Amen. and what you're supposed to do. Amen. On most people, they don't pray in the Holy Ghost enough to really grow anyways. You can't say that, Bob. I'm saying it. Because there's a lot of, there's millions of Christians who cannot hear the voice of God. They're not even aware of the voice of God. They're not aware that the Holy Spirit actually is the voice of God in the New Testament. And they can't tell the difference between the mind of Christ that's in them, the voice of God, and the voice of the Holy Spirit. Uh, so if the church can't tell what the voice of God is, what he's saying, what he's doing, how are we going to obey Him? How are we going to declare the things He wants us to do? And therefore, a lot of things that we're able to sneak into our nation, a lot of secular humanism, a lot of foul doctrines, an unbelievable amount of sexual perversion that is at the highest levels that has crept into our nation, the sex trafficking, stuff you would have never dreamed could have happened in America. How did that happen? It happened because the church wasn't praying. Jesus said, my house will be called a house of prayer. So he's calling us to do that. And I believe this, and I'll say it boldly. I believe that we are a forerunner of people who are called to pray. Now, when I say called to pray, I don't mean called to mumble either. No, I'm not here to mumble. We're not here to pray, you know, bless you my children prayers. Father, bless us all. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, you know. No, we're called to pray in the Holy Ghost because God knows the best way to pray. No, Bob, I, I'm really good prayer. Really? The Holy Ghost knows how to pray better than you. He knows what to say. That's why God gave you the language so that you could do that. And we can pray and we can bring transformation. Yes. And we are doing that. So anyways, let us move on. I'm not angry. I'm just stirred up. Um, <clears throat> I'm prophesying a massive turnaround for the economy of the United States. Amen. The problem with prophesying something like that is sometimes it gets worse before it gets better, and, uh, which is the way with a lot of prophecies. When people get excited about getting prophesied to. I say, well, I did get excited in six months. The next six months might not be that good. But um, Genesis here tells us there was a famine in the land before the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went up to Abimelech, king of the Philistines, under Gerar. Uh, I don't know why I have Genesis there. But anyways, oh, I know why. Here we go. Because that's supposed to be here. There. All healed. In Genesis 26, 12, same chapter. Then Isaac, so this is a time of famine. Then Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. I believe that we can prosper in the midst of a drought, in the midst of a famine, and uh, as long as we don't declare the famine. 
You know, and it's easy, listen, it's easy to get caught up in all the political stuff. I'm saying they're making all the wrong decisions so everything's bad. I realize a lot of wrong decisions have been made and that's why the interest rate and everything's high. And they say, no, everything's fine. You know, the, the, well, how come that steak used to be $10? It's $80 now. I don't know, but it's fine. You know, anyways, we can begin to declare and speak to the inflation, to bring it down, to speak to the gas prices, to speak to the craziness. And believe it or not, a lot, of, a, lot of fi- a lot of ways that the enemy works is through finances. He manipulates and controls through the love of money. That's how he operates. But God is a God of blessing. And when God blesses you, when God blesses you, people can't get to you through the love of money. But if you're poor and broke and have nothing, sometimes it's easy for the enemy to get at somebody. So God wants to bless you so that the enemy doesn't have an open target, that you're not an easy target for him. He wants to bless you. Now that's a spiritual warfare strategy. Well, I don't know how can God bless me. I don't know. Pray. Ask him how to bless you. We have gone over all these scriptures and I'm just going to um, just kind of push them through the screen here because I don't want to go through all of them. But we've gone through these scriptures over the last many weeks and all of them declaring how God wants to bless you. And um, here we go. Actually, this is the one I want to read tonight. So it says this, Psalm 34, 8 through 9, for those who are only listening. O taste and see that the Lord is good. So what is God? God's good. That's something we have to understand about him right away. He is good. He says, taste and see. In other words, experience it. Blessed is the man or the woman that trusts in him. So if you trust in him, he will bless you. Even if you can't see what he's doing behind the scenes, he's doing stuff. Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints. There is no want to them that fear him. He didn't say a lack here. He said there's no want. So you'll even have the things that you want. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. So he says here, there are three things. He says, trust the Lord. And if you trust him, you'll be blessed. Fear him. And that doesn't mean like, oh no, what am I, uh, God's God's after me. No, it's the fear of the Lord. It's the respect of who he is. Let me me tell you something. I could feel it as I'm praying the apostolic authority and the judgment of the apostles is being restored in the church. What does that mean? Well, remember when, remember when Ananias and Sapphira came in and they lied, they lied, they thought they were lying to Peter, but they ended up, they were lying to the Holy Ghost and they died. Now listen, well, no, God's love and he didn't, no, no, God is love, but there's things that he will not allow. He said a little leaven leavens a whole lump. He will not allow certain leaven into the church and it also has to be purged from the world. Talks about that in Corinthians when the guy was sleeping with his, uh, his stepmother. He said, hey, you didn't judge this. He goes, that leaven leavens the whole lump. It, it, it distorts the whole body of Christ. So there is going to be judgment that begins in the house of the Lord. That's what the Bible says. It begins in the house of the Lord. So what, how's that going to be? And, and I'm not talking about people that are struggling with things. Or they're, they're, you know, they're fighting. Maybe they're smoking dope or they're taking something and they're saying, oh, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get free. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about people that openly are defying God or the things of God. You know, bar Jesus, he was, spoke to the governor and said, everything that Paul says is wrong. He was, he was a Jew, but he was, um, he was also a sorcerer and he was trying to persuade the governor and Paul called blindness down upon him. Now, he didn't do that everywhere he was, but he called, he called blindness down upon him. And he couldn't see for a season. Well, Bob, we don't want anything like that. No, listen, listen, I'm telling you, some of that stuff's going to come. And it's gonna, when, when's it going to come? When the Holy Ghost is moving, especially. Because he said, that's one thing. He said, God forgives everything except, except blaspheme the Holy Ghost. You know, Maria Wood, I don't know why I'm in this judgment thing here, but Maria Woodworth Edder, she was doing meetings and she was speaking by the Holy Ghost, and there was these three guys heckling her, and um, heckling her and heckling her, and they just, they just died. 
No, God, he's love. He wouldn't do it. And he is love. But when Satan rebelled, what did he do? Cast him out. Had to cast him out. So God is love. He is restoration. But there are things that if they are not judged, if God doesn't judge the darkness, the darkness spreads. I'm not talking about like night darkness when you're at night and you're sleeping. I'm talking about wicked darkness. If wicked darkness is not judged, we see that on our streets. You know, we see, we, we see that on the news where, you know, these district attorneys uh, are not charging people. The people are getting out of jail as soon as they get in. And what are they doing? They're committing more and more crime. They've closed so many stores out in San Francisco because they were stealing them blind. Why? Why were they able to do that? Because there was no judgment. Also, there must be godly judgment. Anyways, I know we love to hear that kind of stuff. But there it is. All right. I'd like to read this one out of the Proverbs because we're going to talk a little bit about wisdom and understanding tonight. Proverbs 16, 16, it says, How much better is it to get wisdom than gold? To get understanding rather than to be, cho- that, uh, rather to be chosen than silver. You could have no abilities, no skill, nothing. But if you get wisdom, you will prosper. Amen. Wisdom is better than having gold. Amen. I like something that Kat Kerr said. She said there are housewives that God just started giving inventions to. They were not engineers. They had no engineering background. And God was giving them inventions, and, and many of them became millionaires because they just take these things and go, oh, God showed me how to do this, and they did it. We, we think, I have to get a certain kind of a break. But if we can engage the wisdom of God, God's going to prosper us beyond what we think He can do. Okay, well, thank you for that slight amen. Nobody believes it. I believe it because it's happened to me. Anyways, with that, we are going to, well, let me say this. I want to say this one more thing before we take the offering. As we have been, um, whenever we take the offering, we pray. We ask Jesus to present our tithes and offerings as an offering in righteousness, which is what he mentioned in Malachi, that when they came, they would bring an offering in righteousness. He goes, the priests have to be cleansed to bring an offering in righteousness. Now, the priests, what were they doing? Well, Samuel's sons did it, Eli's sons did it. They were stealing the meat and they were raping the women. So it was the love of money and the lust of the flesh. And so, you know, Israel lost the ark because of that, and, and God raised up Samuel to be a prophet because he had to bring judgment into the house of the Lord. <clears throat> so we are not under the law, we know that. But Malachi, there was a certain cleansing of the priesthood so they could bring an offering in righteousness. And then God said this He said, I'm giving you these promises. He goes, You can prove me in this way. He goes, You can prove me with your tithes and offerings. And he said, I will open the windows of heaven. Now for them, because they were, not, they were no longer living in Egypt, the farms weren't being watered by the Nile. They had to be watered by the rain. They lived in a land of hills and valleys. So they needed the rain. And he said, I will open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. There's not room enough to receive. In other words, you will have so much rain and your crops will grow so well that you won't have enough room in your, where you store them to keep all of the crops that you bring in. Well, we don't really do that today. We have different methods of saving and so on. But God will bless you in the realm that you live in. That was the realm they lived in. That was how everybody lived at that time. They didn't have supermarkets. They didn't have freezers. You know, I've got a year's worth of meat in my freezer. Okay, great. They didn't have anything like that. So God will bless us in the realm that he is. And he said, I'll rebuke the devourer for your sake. Well, the devourer was the canker worm and the palmer worm. They were the things that would eat their crops. He said, I'll rebuke them. Well, what are the things that eat our crops? Inflation, high gas prices. I realize that's part of inflation. Crime, bad schools. If the kids can't read, if they can't do math, if they can't, you know, how are they going to be able to work a job? And, 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 and homelessness. Now, 
Jay told a story, and, and you know, right before we we're going to pray, I don't like to hear stories before we pray because I like to pray. But she asked if she could tell it, and she did, and it was a great story. Because we, a couple of weeks ago, and we found that every time we do this, that whatever we've been saying this over is beginning to happen in our nation. The gas price is coming down, inflation price is coming down, and just, you know, a, a crime coming down, and you, you saw what happened, and I don't want to go over it again, what happened here in California with the governor, which was awesome. Um, but the last time, I think one of the last times, we said we, re, we, uh, we rebuke homelessness. Uh, and Jay was saying that there had been this homeless encampment not far from where she lived, been there over eight months, and it was just terrible and, and, and you know, dangerous, dirty, everything you could think of. Just a week or so after we did that, it was gone. Now, that's just one we know of. We don't know other ones, but, well, Bob, that may have just been one small place. Maybe, but it was somebody who's here, who, somebody who rebuked that devourer, and for their sake, it was removed. So I love that. So anyways, we're going to receive the offering tonight, so if you would please make out your checks to the gathering place or soaring ministry, and if you're giving by text, same thing, you can scroll down, it's up there on the board. Gina, could you be a millionaire? Yes. yes, you could, by the spirit of wisdom. Opening doors, helping you. The spirit of wisdom helped God create the world. Rodney, could you be a billionaire? Yes, yes you could. How? By the spirit of wisdom. Gina's going, why don't you ask me about a billionaire? <laughs> I was, I was making an example, millionaire, billionaire, it, 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 it doesn't matter. You understand? It's all good. <laughs> what I'm saying is that God is looking for people that will take hold of his wisdom, his understanding, because he wants to put finances in their hands. Why, why in their hands? Because they won't fritter it away. They won't fritter away on foolishness and stupid stuff. They'll use it to do things for the kingdom of God. Amen? Also, were you prophesying to Gina? In a way, yes. Yeah, because I, I, I felt the prophetic. You prophesying to... You saying Rodney's going to be a billionaire? Yes. I'm <laughs> prophesying that. Hopefully not the same route that I'm going. <laughs> Now, I had a prophecy from Kim Clement and the Holy Spirit. And I was, already it was a thousand people there and I was shaking my fist and the Holy Spirit said, you're going to go broke first. <laughs> but I don't hear that for you, Rodney. So. But it's, it's coming. It's coming. <laughs> it's funny, Nora. I think the millions are coming to you through your son. <laughs> But that's just the sensing of the Spirit. I'm not giving exact words of wisdom here. I'm sensing things. All right. Okay, so let's pray over our offering tonight. So if you would pray with me. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I am so grateful, I am so grateful that, you that you gave everything you had to give me everything you are. Everything you are. Thank you more than anything. That you are my friend. You are my brother. You are my savior. And you are my high priest. So tonight we bring our tithes and offerings. We present them to you. We ask you to present them unto our Father as an offering in righteousness. Make them a sweet savor before him. And we humble ourselves, Father, by proving you in this way. We receive the opening of the windows of heaven to pour out blessings in our lives. And we thank you, Father, that you have rebuked the devourer of inflation for our sake, that you have rebuked high gas prices and high gas taxes in the state of California for our sake. 
that you have rebuked homelessness in the state of California for our sake. Father, we thank you that you have rebuked crime in our state and in our nation for our sake. Amen. Amen. Ushers, go ahead, please, and receive the offering. And over the last couple of months, we have been teaching on the Holy Spirit from the New Testament. And I'll be honest, I've loved those teachings so much. They're just so, they're just have such life in them and expression. But I've been, I've been looking at something for a while and I've been kind of pressed by the Spirit concerning the Spirit of Understanding. And I felt like I was supposed to talk about it tonight, at least open the door to it tonight, as the Lord has been kind of pushing me into it. So I'm going to read a couple of scriptures, and then we'll, I'll give you a couple of thoughts on it. <clears throat> so in Proverbs 8, 1, it says, Does not wisdom cry? And I mean, she's not crying, weeping, but, you know, crying, hey, hey, trying to get your attention. And understanding put forth her voice. So... Wisdom has a voice and understanding has a voice. Now some people say, well, the seven spirits of God, even though the scripture says there are seven spirits of God, we believe it is the sevenfold spirit of God, not what the scripture actually says, the seven spirits of God. Okay. And in Isaiah 11, 2, each one of the spirits is singled out. Each one is spoken of. And it says that these seven spirits are before his throne. It also says that these seven spirits, and we know in Revelation 1, that they greet the church. Now everywhere in the New Testament, the greeting is from God the Father and from Jesus Christ, except in the Revelation of John, which he gives greeting from the Father, he gives greeting from the seven spirits of God and from Jesus. So that means that these spirits are highly valued before God that they are the highest of all in the kingdom of God other than himself, other than the Holy Spirit, other than Jesus. So they are, they are there. And we know from Proverbs 8 that wisdom was there helping the Lord to create the earth as well as understanding. So these are great, great persons. No, it's just a sevenfold nature of the Holy Ghost. Well, I didn't realize the Holy Ghost was a woman or was female because every time it talks about the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of understanding, it's in a female context. Are you with me? <laughs> Some people say, I mean, I don't know about you, but I'm pretty sure that all of the vast creation of God and all of the vast creatures that He has that somewhere there were feminine or female beings. That God didn't just at the last second as he's creating man go, hey, let's make a, an anti-man. Let's make something a little bit the opposite. Let's make a, a male and then a female. Of course, now you have 87 genders. Now listen, it's all, I know we're having fun with it. It's all part of the whole transhumanism thing. And it's not just about, it's not just about people, you know, well, I think I'm a man, but you're a woman. Well, you're not. I think I'm a woman, but I'm, no, you're not. If you test your brain, you'll see that your brain doesn't function the way a woman's brain functions. You can think of maybe two, maybe two, maybe at the most three things at once. Women, they can think about 10, 11 things at once. Men, the thing that you're thinking about at the moment has the priority. With a woman, they all have the same priority. So with you, I've got to pay the mortgage. That has a high priority. I've got to put gas in the car. Low priority, but it's still a priority. Woman, change the diaper, pay the mortgage. Same priority. And the truth is, the diaper's got to be changed. <laughs> I mean, it could be a problem. So God created the brains differently. So the transhumanism and the thing they've been working on for a long time, and really it goes back to, 
it goes back to the Nephilim when they came and they said they looked upon the daughters of men, that they were beautiful and they wanted to have families. They wanted to have genetic children. We know that from, we know that from the book of Enoch. And they did. And, they were, and when they were on the earth, they ha- when they had a, a coupling together that was not meant to be together, what happened? You had abominations. You had the Nephilim. So when God created the man and the woman, you put a man and a woman together, what do you get? You get life. Unless you murder the life in the womb. But you get life. You put two men together, what do you get? You might get AIDS. Put two women together, what do you get? You don't get anything. Because it's an abomination. What's the abomination? Well, the abomination is God said, I have a perfect match, a man and a woman. That's a perfect match. And so when men, and Romans says, when men try to do differently, they say men with men, women with women, that's an abomination because it's against the plan of God. But it's not the only abomination. The abomination were these watchers, there were over 200 of them, that came to earth and they began to have families. And it said these giants, when they consumed everything, they began to consume the men of the earth and they began to consume one another. But there's other abominations that are going on now. They're trying to mix the DNA from different kind of animals with human beings to get these hybrid human beings or hybrid soldiers or different things. Some of the stuff you see in the movies, trust me, they've tried it. The whole, and listen, I've listened to some different things on this and I'm I'm always a little iffy to say it, but the whole COVID thing is like a snake venom. So they're trying, to, they're trying to change the purity of the DNA of man, and that's what happened in the days of Noah. Say, God, God didn't uh, destroy the earth because it was the one. They're all bad people. No. He destroyed the earth because there was no genetic purity left on the earth. These beings kept multiplying. They lost genetic purity, and the only one that was pure that was left that we know of was Noah and his family. Now, there might have been some more than that, but they're the only ones that survived and went on and restarted the human race. Jesus could not have been born through a perverted nature or through a perverted bloodline. He could not have come through that. So God had to do that to save all of humanity, to keep his promise to the woman. This is None of this is in the... In the notes. <laughs> but the transgenderism, the trans, you know, like, like when I was young and a dope smoking punk and, and it just believed every wrong thing, you know, you never even heard about transgender. It wasn't even, a, it wasn't even like a thought. How did it suddenly spring up out of nowhere? Well, it's satanic. But it's not the worst thing. I believe the transhumanism is going to be even worse, and that's where they begin to mesh. They begin to mesh computers with people's brains. Now, yeah, and I now realize they're already starting it. Some of it, now some of it for somebody that can't see, there might be things that are helpful, and and of course people say, well, there's a good part of it, yeah. But what happens when it starts to take over more of your functions, and then maybe take control? That's the possibility, and also having your DNA changed. I mean, one of, the, one of the shots they were giving out, it actually affected the RNA of human beings. So this is some of the stuff we're living in. And why are you saying this? Because these are things that are coming up as I'm praying that God is having me to rebuke, have me to take it down. This, this form of debauchery, this form of transhumanism and everything else, it's gotta, it, can't, it cannot be allowed to rise up. God judged the old world. Judged it. Because of it. Now, he's never going to do anything like that quite again. I don't know where to go from here, Rodney, because I totally went off the course. <sighs> okay. So let's try to get back on course. 
So wisdom puts forth her voice. Understanding puts forth her voice. They are spirits sent from God to mentor you, to raise you up, to help you to live this life. You may not know this, but every person in this room has a specific life path that God has arranged for you. Best way to know it is to pray in the Holy Ghost. God has a life path that he has arranged for you. In Proverbs 1, 1 and 2, it says, the Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction to perceive the words of understanding. So we see here, we see the connection here with wisdom and understanding. They're very much connected. And I didn't realize how much until, I don't know, maybe the last year, six months, when I kept having visitations from both the spirit of wisdom and understanding, and as of late, more uh, the spirit of understanding, when I say that, with wisdom. Because I was seeking wisdom. I was not necessarily seeking understanding, but wisdom began to bring the spirit of understanding to me. And since that's happened, it's changed the way that I think about a lot of things, the way that I see things. The way that I use the imagery that God, God gives you. He gives you imagery to see things. Why does he give you imagery to see things? Because when you see them and you say them, they begin to manifest. Are you with me? Yeah. See, say, manifest, not see, saw. See, say. Okay. Michael, nobody got that. Marina didn't even get it. She's usually pretty good with that. Okay. Proverbs 7. And this is the Passion Translation, and I really love this, these, these particular verses in this translation. And you say, is it the most accurate translation? I've known since I was young that the most accurate translation is going to be the New American Standard Bible. And um, I think Kevin Zadai was saying one of his friends was a scholar, said it's actually, and I've heard this from more than one person, it's actually the... Um, Oh, what is that one, Michael? The uh, Amplified, the Amplified Translation. But just word for word, the New American Standard is the more accurate translation. So he says here, and, and this may not be the most accurate, but it's pretty good. Stick close to my instruction, my son, and follow my advice. If you do what I say, you will live well. Guard your life with my revelation truth. And, and this particular passage I have memorized in the Passion Translation. I like it so much. So what I'm reading to you, I've memorized. If you do what I say, you will live well. Guard your life with my revelation truth, for my teaching is as precious as your eyesight. Now, nobody really believes that, that teaching is as precious as your eyesight, but he's trying to, he's trying to like present to you, hey, this is as precious as your very eyes that you look with, that you, you know, Everything you do is based on what you can see. Treasure my instructions and cherish them within your hearts. Say to wisdom. What, is, what does say mean? Is, is, that, is that an expression of something you do? Like if it said, say to Nathan, I would say, hey Nathan. That's, that's saying to Nathan. I would call him out Nathan. Say to wisdom. Say to, say to Rodney. Hey, Rodney, I'm saying to Rodney. It's telling us, say to wisdom, I love you. The King James is, is not as, as beautiful as that. But it's still very good. Call wisdom your sister, understanding your kinswoman. Call them or say. So it says, say to wisdom, I love you. That means that you can say to wisdom, I love you. No, Bob, only the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. But the seven spirits of God addressed you in the book of Revelation. They personally addressed you. Because that, those letters were written, that particular letter was written to the church. The church was addressed. So you can say to wisdom, I love you. Now listen, Michael is a friend of mine, and if I say to him, Michael, I love you, you know, we're brothers, we could say that to each other. Or Rodney say, hey, I love you, brother. Well, I do. But you can't say that to wisdom. No, you can't say that to wisdom. Only the Father said, no, no. You can say to wisdom, I love you. And you're supposed to say to wisdom, I love you. 
In other words, you're supposed to have a relationship with the spirit of wisdom. Listen, the people of the New Testament, if they looked at how spiritually devoid we were, they would laugh at us. And they, they were the barely born again church. When they got everybody saved, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, started speaking in tongues, like right away. Not only that, they were speaking in tongues and prophesying, like day one. Paul talks about traveling in the Spirit and, and, and seeing what's going on at Corinth. I mean, these guys were advanced, and here we are 2,000 years later, and we're trying to catch up, and we have belief systems. When you have a belief system, like I had a belief, listen, I've studied Proverbs since pretty much day one. I was just drawn to it. I was drawn to the Proverbs like from day one. And I remember, I remember early on I was teaching. And I was in my 20s and I was teaching. We had a, we had a, it was our first church we were building up. And I, I was teaching on wisdom from the Proverbs. And all I was doing was using the scriptures. And I didn't, listen, I thought that wisdom was Jesus. I thought, because that's what I was taught. But I didn't say that as I was teaching, but I just was teaching from the Proverbs. And a couple of elders came up to me and they said, hey, you sound like the, the wisdom is some other, other Holy Ghost, like another Holy Ghost. And I said, I didn't say that, but I did. You know why? Well, not another Holy Ghost, but I did because I was saying, I was literally just reading the scriptures when wisdom was talking and wisdom talks like a person. But that wasn't within our belief system. So one young lady, she came to our church, and she's saying, what should I do to start with? And I gave her different advice than I gave most people. I said, I feel like you're supposed to really focus in the Proverbs. And I want you to read a proverb every day. I said, but I don't want you just to read it. I want you to read it very slowly. Now, I'm not recommending this for you because... I know that you have no desire to have wealth whatsoever. You have no desire to have your life in order. So don't do what I'm saying right now. I said, go through the Proverbs, but I go, read very slowly. And I go, whatever verse really stands out to you that day, I go, focus on that verse through the day. I go, if nothing stands out, go back and reread the chapter. And there's a proverb for every day. So after she did this for a period of time, and I didn't know things I know now, this is many years ago, but the spirit of wisdom came to her in a dream in the night. But she didn't know who it was, and so she rebuked it. <laughs> she rebuked the spirit of wisdom. Thought it was a demon or something. But she didn't feel any demon power, didn't feel any darkness. There was light and glory, but she rebuked it because why wouldn't she? It was really when we connected with Ian Clayton that we understood the spirit of wisdom. And she realized, oh my God, that was the spirit of wisdom visiting me. Why? Why would wisdom? Because she was waiting daily at wisdom's gate. That had become a priority to her. No, Bob, just the gospel of Jesus Christ. Well, the gospel of Jesus Christ is a lot of things, including healing, life, righteousness, but these spirits are here to help us, and the spirit of wisdom is here to help you. Help you do what? Help you to grow up in the kingdom of God. Help you to become, listen, whatever you think your calling is, it's not that relevant compared to who you are. A hundred trillion years from now, whatever you were called to now isn't as relevant as you as a son of God. Moses thought his calling was really relevant. I'm going to free Israel. And then he became a murderer and ran for 40 years. Joseph was telling everybody about his dreams. I, I have these dreams that everybody's bowing down to me. Then he ended up in jail well, after slavery. They couldn't fulfill their callings until their callings were no more, longer important to them. What's important to God for you is who you are and your relationship with Him. But the kingdom of God is built on relationships, and one of those relationships is with the spirit of wisdom. 
but also with the spirit of understanding. So say to wisdom, I love you, and to understanding, you're my sweetheart. So it's not just the spirit of wisdom, it's the spirit of understanding. And I remember when they walked into my office one morning on a Saturday, and I felt the presence, I mean, they literally, I walked in, I saw them in the spirit, I felt the presence, and then the spirit of wisdom backed up, and the spirit of understanding began to just speak to me. And I realized I was supposed to teach on the spirit of understanding that day. Now listen, we're seeing this in churches all across the country are suddenly going, hey, we felt, we felt, felt impressed to teach on the seven spirits of God. Now some of, them, some of them are right. Some of them are doing the best they can. I'm not mad at those who are doing the best they can because they're picking something up in the spirit, but their doctrine and their beliefs is not allowing them to really fully teach it the way they can. But they're picking up on it. If they keep teaching on it, it's going to come through to them. They're going to get it. Understanding, you are my sweetheart. That's a relationship. That's a friendship. Now, it's not like human beings, you know, it's like, not like a husband and a wife type thing. It's not that kind of a thing. It's a heavenly relationship. It's a heavenly love. May the two of you protect me. I, I, I just love the way it says this in the Passion Translation. May of the two of you protect me and may, may we never be apart. What? Can you imagine if Solomon had taken his own advice his whole life? That said that he was seduced or his heart was changed by the many wives that he had. Now I realize that a lot of the wives that he married were for making covenants with other nations. But listen, somewhere along the line, 700 wives is a lot of wives. That's a lot of trouble. And then, but then he had 300 concubines, 300 women he slept with who weren't his wives. There was no covenants there. So <laughs> somewhere along the line, he lost the understanding of wisdom, even though he talks about it. But he said to them, may the two of you protect me and may we never be apart. And that's what you want to make sure is that you, you know, every day when you're waking up and you're, you're telling Jesus how much you love him and you're thanking God, the Father, for His grace, and you're saying, Holy Spirit, lead me and guide me today, and, and, but that you take some time and you address the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of understanding, or even say, I address the seven spirits of God, and I say, and say, help me with my life today. But for me, I don't necessarily say that. I just go into the Proverbs, and I start to meditate on them. That's my way of saying, help me. Because what does wisdom say, Bob? It's all there in the Proverbs. Everything wisdom's saying is in the Proverbs. Wisdom is speaking to you. So she doesn't have to come up and give you some new doctrine. It's all there. May the two of you protect me and may we never be apart, for they will keep you from the adulteress with her smooth words meant to seduce your heart. Now remember, in Proverbs 9, in the Passion Translation, after Proverbs 8 and 9, the first, cha- the first part of chapter 9 is still the spirit of wisdom speaking. But right around 13th, 14th verse says, a foolish, the foolish woman. But in the Passion Translation, it says, the spirit of folly. Or it says, there is a spirit called folly or foolishness. Well, the spirit of wisdom is, is a person, is a spirit. Now, in the King James and really some of the other translations, they just said, there's a woman called foolishness or a foolish woman. But it says, there is a spirit called folly. And that spirit tries to deceive people and pull them into a false relationship. For the Israel, it was trying to pull them into a false relationship with false gods. What were they continually doing? Serving false gods. What was God continually correcting them on, sending them prophets for? Think about Hosea, false gods. All right. You still with me? Yes. Okay. I'm not making you tired and sleepy, are we? No. Okay, because I see somebody sleeping on the third row. All right, Proverbs 3, verse 13. Happy is the man that finds wisdom. 
If you're not happy, listen, there's your answer. I'm not happy, Bob. There's your answer. No, I want a different answer. Okay, let me make something up. And go try it. And then um, when it doesn't work, and you ask me to give you another answer, I'll give you this one again. But I'll make it somehow sound different so that you can accept it. If you're not happy, you haven't found wisdom. I tell you what, that won't go over in a lot of places. Because pe- people wanna, they want some deep thought as to why they're miserable or why they're not happy. You're not happy because you don't have wisdom. Well, no, it's because I don't have this cer- certain kind of car. Or I don't have money. or I don't. Ha- no. If you have wisdom, you're going to be happy. And so happy is the man that finds wisdom and the man that gets understanding. So you've got you to have the spirit of understanding there too. You've got to have understanding. God wants to not only give us wisdom to create the earth like he, that wisdom did with the Father, but understanding how things work, how they operate. So that we can begin to instruct and reign and rule. Now maybe, maybe none of you will ever go into politics, but I think we have to begin to prepare a generation to start going into politics Otherwise, we're going to get these meatheads that are in there, and they don't know what they're doing. They, they really are. It's like Dan Bongino said. He goes, these are some of the most stupid people you've ever met in your life, and they're in there running things. Why? Because nobody else wants to do it. Nobody wants to go into government and do anything because you know, either they're going in there for the money, you know, thankfully, we had somebody that said, who it was? Everybody loved them. Both sides loved Donald Trump. He was a multi-billionaire. Didn't need anything, but made a choice to run because he saw the direction the country was going. And he is the Cyrus, just as Cyrus was raised up. He is the Cyrus of our generation. But he can't do it on his own. Other people are being raised. We're now starting to see smart people being raised up. We don't just need smart people. We need wise people. People that have wisdom, people that have understanding. Oh, Bob, I'm too old. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, uh, Diane Feinstein. You know, they were rolling her in there, and she was just, you know, slobbering on herself, and she was still voting. So I think you could do it. All right. So the merchandise of what of wisdom and understanding is better than the merchandise of silver and the gain thereof than fine gold. It's better than that. She is more precious than rubies, and all the things that canst, thou canst desire not to be compared unto her. Length of days in her right hand. Everybody wants to live long, but they want to live healthier. Wisdom. If you're, if you're drawn to do things to extend your life, that's the spirit of wisdom that's upon you. You say, Bob, I feel like, I feel like I'm supposed to live long, and I'm, you know, that's the spirit of wisdom. I didn't know, I just thought I was thinking that, no, no, that's the spirit of wisdom. The spirit of wisdom gives you the desire to have a long life and gives you that because without the desire, just lay, lay in bed. Just be a bed rotter. <laughs> That's an actual thing. There was on TikTok. People were, they were called bed rotters. You know, they, they lay in bed and rot. Uh, so, but the spirit of wisdom gives you the desire for long life. And if she gives you the desire, she's going to give you understanding how to do it. And that's the spirit of understanding. Length of days in her right hand and her left hand, riches and honor. I know you don't want that, but I'm sorry. If you embrace wisdom, I'm sorry. It's going to come your way. And there's nothing you can do about it. I'll give it all away. Well, the Bible says, given it shall be given unto you, so good luck. But I'm serious. Oh, no, Bob, I, I want riches and honor. I want people to honor me. I want people to say, hey, look, there goes Bob. See how famous he is? You probably don't want that, but riches and honor come with wisdom. Well, I don't have either. Well, maybe not now, but if you keep embracing wisdom, the day will come when you must. Well, what if it never happens? Well, then you've never actually engaged wisdom. But if you truly engage with... Listen, most people don't do 
almost anything you say when you're preaching. I've learned that over the years. They'll take bits and pieces, like they'll say, healing, pray for me, boss. It's like, oh, okay, so you understand almost zero about healing, but you want me to pray for you. No, I understand, I think a lot. No, but they don't. So you preach, that's why you preach things over and over, because people don't get it. If everybody, if everybody in the church world engaged wisdom, everybody would be rich. Oh, I'm going to engage wisdom to get rich. No, 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 no. If you engage wisdom to be rich, rich, you won't be rich because you're not engaging wisdom because you love her. She knows the difference between people that love her and people that are engaging her to get something from her. Same with understanding. Any of these seven spirits of God, they're not fools. They're the seven spirits of God. They're the highest of God's creation. There's nothing higher than them. You're not going to fool them. But if you have a sincere desire and a sincere heart, and how will they know that? Because you're seeking them day after 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 day without letting up. And they'll know who you are. And they will begin to manifest things to you. And when they do, at some point, you'll, you'll do this, you'll go, hey, why is this happening in my life? And that's when God will, the Holy Spirit will say, you've engaged the spirit of wisdom. Can't be helped. She is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her. Happy is everyone that retains her. No, not, not that has her and lets her go. Now, I'm not talking, this, this is not a marriage like you marry a husband or a wife. But it's a relationship that you're never supposed to let go of. This isn't an, this isn't an angel that God's sending to help you out for a season of time or something. I mean, you have a guardian angel who's with you all the time, but sometimes God will send you an angel to help you, or maybe angels that work with you. This is something more. This is the, this is the spirit of wisdom. This is the spirit of understanding. And they're not the only ones. Obviously, there's knowledge and the fear of the Lord and the might and so on, counsel. But she's a tree of life. And if you retain her, you will stay happy. The Lord by wisdom, and now listen, and this is where, this is where God humbles us. God's humbling us right here in the statement. The Lord by wisdom has founded the earth. Oh, oh, the Lord himself works with wisdom. I guess, maybe, I can too. By understanding has he established the heavens. So, it's not just wisdom, it's understanding. And I can feel, like, like I, I can, can feel Rodney's spirit, I can feel him just picking it up like... I can feel him picking up the understanding part, like, like he's going, like I, his brain is going, his brain and his mind and his heart are going, I'm, I'm engaging understand. He's already like, he's like, doesn't want to wait for me to finish. That's right, all right? I can, I can feel it from him. He's like, he's, I'm engaging understanding. I love that. Because that, engaging the spirit of wisdom, engaging, if every person in our church did that, oh my God. Talking about fun, we'd be telling the worst jokes all the time. <laughs> we'd be telling jokes like this. I heard, I heard this online. It was like a, a husband and a wife, and the man said he, was, he loved money so much, he said, his, he said to his wife, said, when I die, I want you to bury my money with me. I want to take it with me. And so uh, finally he dies, and, you know, and... Um, he has all this money. He's got all this cash and all this money. And so they're getting ready to put him in the ground and she puts this box on. They go, no, you don't, don't put millions of dollars. It's going to just go in the ground in the grave. And she said, well, she said, he said he wanted to take all his money with him. So I took all of his money, put it in the bank, and I wrote him a check. <laughs> <laughs> now, I literally do know somebody who's a very rich person that they, they, they literally said, I want to take my money with me. <laughs> yeah, that means money's your God, and that's not the best thing. These spirits help God create the heavens and the earth. 
So I want to I wanna begin to engage them more and more, and I'm recognizing now why that I, I cannot just engage the spirit of wisdom, why I must also engage the spirit of understanding, why it's important. And if it's important for me, I think it's maybe important for you too. All right. So Proverbs 2, verse, and I don't think we're going to get through this tonight. I think we're probably not going to get past this. Um, let me just show you. These are the notes for tonight. So we, we, may, we may not get done. <laughs> I don't think we're going to get past this last scripture here. Okay. I like to be prepared. Anyways. My son, if thou wilt receive my words, hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom. That means going out of your way. Apply thy heart to understanding. So listen to wisdom, but also apply your heart to understanding. And that could be verse, vice versa. In other words, you have to allow understanding to actually penetrate your heart. No one in history until Solomon <clears throat> had fully engaged these spirits. David did engage wisdom because one of the places it talks about, he said, I've learned this from my father. Solomon talks about this. So his first engagement with wisdom was not when God poured it out upon him. It was through his father, David. But he's saying here, having transformed the kingdom of Israel, having no wars. Can you imagine, can you imagine a time in history where there's no wars? In my lifetime, there's always been some war going on. Oh, wait a minute, except when Donald Trump was president. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't start any wars. But in my lifetime, there's always been some war going on. Who wants wars? I'm pretty sure it's not God. He said, incline your ear to wisdom, apply your heart to understanding. If you cry after knowledge, now knowledge also is a spirit that is very much connected to wisdom and understanding. I, I like to call them the triplets, but at this point in time, the Holy Spirit is just connecting me or engaging, causing me to engage with wisdom and understanding. If you lift up your voice for understanding, if you seek her as silver, would you say her is a person? I mean, the word, when you use the word her, that would be a person. What kind of a person? Is it a non-binary person? No, it's a female. If thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as for hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord. Oh, so if I connect with wisdom and understanding, then I'll understand the fear of the Lord, which is another spirit, and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom, out of his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. So all of these spirits are connected to God. God is the one, God your Father is the one giving them to you to mentor you. Now are they going to be with you for all the eons of time? Not like they will be, you need them now. But in the eons of, you know, of the future, you may not need them. But it doesn't mean you won't be friends with them, it doesn't mean you won't love them. Or have connection to them. But now we need them. Now, and, and here's the thing. The Holy Spirit is omnipotent. He's everywhere. But you have to wait at wisdom's gate. Proverbs 8. You have to wait at the door of wisdom. You have to wait at the gate of wisdom. She has to open the door. It says that she has set her table. She's killed her beast. She's mingled her wine. She set her table. She sent forth her maidens. And that's another thing. There are, Ian talks about the five maidens of wisdom. She's hewn out her seven pillars. So she has a house. She wants you to come to her. The Holy Spirit is with you. 
Bob, who's the greatest spirit of them all? The Holy Spirit. Remember the story I told about, I talked about the other day? The guy that had the, picked up the angel, was angels unaware. And when the angel, and he's telling them all this stuff about his life, and then, and he says, well, I, I'm, you know, I'm prophetic. He told the angel he's prophetic. And he goes, because he thought maybe this is a person still. They're very prophetic. And that person, that angel said, you have like, you have no idea. You have the Holy Spirit. You, you don't even know. You have the Holy Spirit. We don't even know. Like, I'm pretty sure I don't even know, and I know more than most of you. The, the de- I mean, we've had the Holy Spirit, like, 24-7. All right, let's finish up. The Lord gives wisdom out of his mouth, comes knowledge and understanding. I'm going to go on to the seventh verse. I put the little thing there because I want you to know God's wisdom is not accidental. You must seek it. He lays up, God the Father, He lays up sound wisdom for the righteous. That's who you are through Jesus Christ. He is a buckler, that's a shield, to them that walk uprightly. He keeps the path of judgment and preserves the way of His saints. Then shalt thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity, yea, every good path. When wisdom enters into thine heart, just a minute ago, I talked about, I talked about understanding entering your heart. When wisdom enters into thy heart and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul, discretion shall preserve thee. Understanding shall keep thee. Understanding keeps you. When you engage the spirit of wisdom and understanding, guess what? You're going to avoid the bar fights. You're going to avoid the accidents. You're going to avoid a lot of things. Solomon, who reigned under the spirit of wisdom and understanding and knowledge and so on, that had no wars. Why? Because he was being protected and instructed. Now, was the Holy Spirit with Solomon? Yeah, not like with you, but yes. Was God the Father the one orchestrating it? Yes. But God the Father said, I'm giving you these spirits. Specifically wisdom. And wisdom always comes with understanding and most of the time knowledge. And so there were seven spirits, it says, before the throne of God. It said these are the seven spirits of God which are sent into all the earth. So they're, they are meant to mentor us so that times we mostly go to them, but at times they come to us. They're not like the Holy Spirit who's with you all the time. You have to engage them. So let's stand up. And I don't think I have written up an engagement for understanding, but maybe I have. Let me see here. Wisdom's maidens. You want to hear the names? Do you really, Nathan? Because you're the only voice I could hear that inspired me. No, you, and you're, you, you said it with enthusiasm. You inspired me. Nobody else inspired me. You gave me a cheesy yes. Anybody want to hear who the five maidens are? Yes. <laughs> God, still only half of you. That's pathetic. All right. For the half of you. Oh, these are the scriptures that go with it. Uh, one of them is glory. 1 Peter 4.14. Holiness, Romans 1.4. Truth, John 16, 13. Excellent, Daniel 5, 12. Faith, 2 Corinthians 4, 13. Life, Revelation 11, 11. Promise, Ephesians 1, 13. Those are the handmaidens of wisdom. Remember it says she sends them forth. And what does she say after she sends them forth? It says she cries at the highest place of the city. Proverbs 9. She cries at the highest place of the city. Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither. And she says, Come eat of my bread and drink of the wine which I've mingled. In other words, wisdom is saying, I want to teach you about the communion. You don't think that wisdom was in on the whole plan before Jesus came to the earth? Nope, she's, she knows all about it. Let's 
Let's see, maybe I have something here. All right, well, we're just going to have to do a simple prayer. Ronnie, would you mind um, going to the piano? Why don't you just close your eyes? And with your imagination, understand this. In, you know, the eyes of understanding we see, but if you say, I don't know how to see, you start with your imagination. Wisdom is a very tall woman, very light hair, very elegant, slim. Understanding is similar, but with different hair, darker hair, different face. They're already here. What? Because we've been talking about them, they're here. They're here. They're wanting to engage you. And so we're going to engage them. Father in heaven, tonight together as a body, we come boldly to your throne of grace. And I pray that you would give unto me the spirit of wisdom, spirit of understanding, the spirit of knowledge, spirit of the fear of the Lord, spirit of counsel the spirit of might and prudence. But I ask tonight that you would reveal wisdom to me, that you would reveal understanding to me. Let me be filled with the spirit of wisdom and understanding. Father, give me wisdom and understanding and largeness of heart as the sand that is on the seashore. Give me a wise and understanding heart. Now I want you to just softly begin to pray in the Holy Spirit. And I want you to engage the spirit of wisdom right now. I don't know how many of you felt that, but Gina, and this could have happened to every person in the room, but I only, I only saw the spirit of understanding by you, but I'm sure she was touching everybody here. The spirit of understanding was standing behind you. She had a look of compassion on her face. She's tall now. She put her arms and she wrapped them around you from behind. I don't know if you could even feel that, but she wrapped her arms around you from behind and said, I've been here for the last three months and I've been directing you and I've been helping you for the last three months. So I don't know what happened three months ago. Maybe you were engaging wisdom, but you accidentally engaged understanding at the same time. Uh, so she said, I'm with you. It's like, it's not like your first time engaging understanding. It's like you have been in an engagement 
because when she embraces you, that means she's been in engagement with you for a while. She says, I'm going to help you. All of that, when I was looking in the Spirit, I saw all of that. Now, and I want to clarify, that doesn't mean that she wasn't engaging everybody here because she's a multi-layered soul like you are. She can engage many at once. But I, I just specifically saw one. That's what I saw. However she engaged you is different because she engaged me as well. And Mr. Slurpee over here is slurping it all in. He's like, he's really engaging understanding tonight. I said, I said, Mr. Slurpee is really engaging understanding tonight. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I heard that. Um, I, virtually every morning, I read Proverbs 8, 34 in the Passion Translation, and it says, if you wait at wisdom's doorway, longing to hear a word, for every day, joy will break forth as you listen for what I'll say. And this morning, I heard a word, and it's usually what I get is just one word, a word. The word this morning was pathways. Hmm. And what wisdom revealed to me tonight, and maybe it was understanding revealed, tonight we got the pathway. We got the pathway tonight with this teaching. Thank God you did that on the microphone, Rodney. I, I believe that is the perfect ending. I, I just believe that solidified everything and fit. Can you say God is good? God is good. He loves you all so much. Um, like I can see, I, I see, I mean, there's other things I've seen here tonight. I see the spirit of prayer over you, Belinda. It's just over you. Pat, I see it like a spirit of glory over you. It's like the glory of the Lord. So when you spent a lot of time in the presence of God, the glory of the Lord starts to come upon you. Belinda, there's a lot of prayer going on over you. Um, get ready to start ascending. Ascending. And, and, and listen, I'm not talking about having open vision per se, but I'm talking about ascending because we're seated at the right hand of the Father. We're seated with Jesus. It says... Ephesians 2, 6. See together in heavenly places in Christ. But I see you ascending into the heavenlies and beginning to gain authority in the heavenlies and begin to pray from the heavenlies. And um, when I say pray, it's going to be more of a commanding to the earth. Amen. Amen. So those are some things that I just, there's some things I just saw tonight as we were praying together. For those of you that are not here, why aren't you here? No. We love you and appreciate you, and I pray that you had an encounter tonight with the spirit of understanding or the spirit of wisdom, either one. Um, they're, they're both awesome, and if you didn't, go back and listen to this over and over, or you can go back into our archives. We did a lot of teachings on the spirit of wisdom um, if you want to go back and, and engage wisdom, because I don't know if I'm going to do another one of these um, in the weeks to come. Maybe, well, maybe, maybe we need to actually finish this one up. We didn't finish it tonight. So probably we'll at least do that. But that's not going to be for a couple of weeks because I will be gone next week and Barry's going to be here. Barry Linhart, we're very excited him to be here. Where are you going to be, Bob? I'm going to be driving with my son David back from Montana. So I'm excited to, yeah. excited to have him out here for a couple of months in California and I think he'll probably even come by and visit you. That's... that's <laughs> It's uh, uh, just, let me just say that, and you know, I'm used to doing it. It's not a, it's not a burden to me it's not, because I have a grace for it. But if you don't have a grace for it, you don't want to drive down here from Carlsbad. <laughs> and then Carol said, she goes, I drove to Carlsbad. That's a heck of a drive. I said, yep. But you have the grace for it. It seems easy. Today, man, today was a beautiful drive. Just I could feel the spirit, just the, the spirit of God. I could just feel the spirit of God moving in California as I'm praying through, praying through, um, See how many counties? San Diego County, um, <clears throat> Orange. I think yeah, Orange County, not San Bernardino, but Orange County, Los Angeles County, and then uh, Ventura County. So four counties praying in the Holy Spirit. For those of you home, we love you, we bless you, and um, I pray that God's grace will be with you.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that his mercy would be with you. And I also pray that his kingdom, his righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit be with you. We love you and we appreciate you. And if you can, come and join us tomorrow for prayer. If not, please come and join us uh, Saturday. Start the month off right because we're, we're going into March. And one last thing, that March, I think it's March 10th, which is a Sunday or Saturday night late, we go into daylight savings, hopefully for the last time. Yeah. <laughs> All right. God bless you. You are dismissed.